What is happening y'all? Cowboy here and welcome back and it is now time for Millennia the Blade of Mikola. Now this is considered by most to be the hardest fight in the game. There's a reason it's tucked away in a hidden zone at the bottom of the city, uh, but you do need to take her down to get your platinum. Uh, now a couple things up front, Frost is going to be good here, Bleed is going to be good here. Uh, she's weaker to thrust damage, but not by much, so if you have a thrust weapon like this, it's, it's helpful. She's resistant to holy, so you don't want to try and use any holy stuff or holy weapons. Uh, this fight is very much a DPS race. You need to kill her as fast as you can, because as she attacks you, she's going to heal. So in a battle of attrition, she's going to win. Um, staying aggressive here is incredibly important. Uh, in terms of summons, if you have the right build, Mimic is really good. Otherwise, Tish is a very solid choice for this fight. Uh, some big things to look out for. In Phase 1, she has something called Waterfowl Dance. This is the unique weapon art on her katana. Um, she's going to go up into the air and then kind of rush at you with a flurry of attacks. And then a second flurry. And then a third flurry. Sorry, getting a, getting a little tongue twister there. But so three separate flurries of attacks. The third one has an additional blast that goes off of it at the end. A uh, couple different ways we can try and do this. We can try and shut it down with the Great Shield. Um, if you have a medium shield with Barricade, that will also work here. Uh, besides that, um, if you see it coming, you can run backwards. The first one will whiff, and then you need to dodge through the second and dodge through the third. So there's a couple different ways to avoid it, but you want to avoid it. Because if this thing connects with you, she's going to get a massive amount of health back. Uh, even if you block, she is going to get health back, but... You know, having a shield with barricade or a great shield to block and shut it down is better than it killing you outright. In phase two, she is going to do uh, what we just call it Scarlet Bomb. She does, she hits the ground with a big explosion, causes rot to go everywhere, deal a bunch of damage. When she is doing this, however, she is locked in an animation and is vulnerable. So when that time comes, you can load up and hit her with arrows of your own to try and get some damage in. Uh, bird bolts are going to work great here because of the poison damage they're going to deal. Uh, you can't use rot or poison almost at all in this fight. I mean, I think I think you actually can, but like the damage isn't going to be there. So don't even worry about trying to rot at all. Um, i trying to think. I think that covers it. I mean, honestly, this is very much just like a get good fight. We're going to be trying a couple different setups. The first is going to be the, the shield and the pokes, just because I'm really curious to see how that does against her. Uh, so how many uh, stuff do I have? I have? Four of those. We're not going to probably need those. I mean, you could get rotted, but it's it's unlikely. Pop this. That puts me up to what? 52%. Not too shabby. Well, let's summon Tish and then get to it. We'll let this one play out. I mean, she is a pretty badass boss. I dreamt for so long. My flesh was dull gold, and my blood rotted. Corpse after corpse left in my wake. As I awaited his return. Heed my words. I am Melania, Blade of Mikola. And I have never known defeat. Ah, oh, man, it just sends chills, doesn't it? So, anyway, oh, she's already coming for me. Yeah, she's aggressive as hell. Ugh. Okay, Tish, come on out. 
And I'm gonna try and get a Dragon Ice off right at the start here while she's distracted. If we can inflict Frost on her, that's gonna be fantastic. Okay, Frost is up. Uh, you can actually parry her, but obviously you need to like learn the parry timings. That's Waterfowl. You can see how there's the additional burst that comes after it. I'm getting how much damage out of that? 600 per poke looked like. No! Oh, oh, the grab attack! See how she is just healing and healing and healing and healing and healing. This is why you gotta just stay constantly aggressive on her. You can't, you can't let her heal at all. And that's not working as well as I would have hoped. So we're gonna go to this. This bleed is gonna be fantastic. Getting a critical, um, honestly not worth it. You're better off just continuing the bleed on her. the bleed. Now, phase two, like I said, things are going to be crazy. Uh, as soon as this phase starts, we are going to unlock. We're just going to haul ass straight underneath her. We want to get under her, um, and that's going to be the best way to dodge this bomb. Now, after the bomb, we're going to hot swap over to our crossbow, start shooting her. Mages, this is when you're going to do your biggest snoop. This is when you would do your common azure. Faith guys, this is when you're going to do your frenzied burst or lightning spears or whatever. This is when you need to get your damage in, is after that bomb. Because she's stuck for about four to five seconds. Melee builds, you can you can run in and hit her, uh, but the entire time you're going to take really heavy damage over time, and you're going to get inflicted with rot. God, she has this crazy, like, anime jutsu clone thing she does. Run away from it, dodge backwards and to the side. You don't want to get hit by it, it'll basically kill you. bubble to protect you. We're going real hard on her. Let's pop an exalted flesh. I want to kill her. This fight. First attempt millennia. Let's go. Oh no, not waterfowl. Oh. I might be dead here. on her before she kills t -shear. This is the anime copies. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh man. Dodge the final one. Ah, she got us. Like, 
look at the crazy healing she has coming in there. That was a pretty good first attempt, though. So we're gonna... Hmm, I don't know if it's gonna be worth having on, to be honest. Um, we'll keep that on. Yeah, we're gonna go Mimic this time. Honestly, subsequent attempts are actually kind of easier because she starts farther away. So, when you walk in, you have a moment to, like, get all of your juiciness up. And what you can do, if she comes over here, you can actually kind of pin her against the tree and just beat her ass. No, I'm dead. That didn't work out at all. I might just start hitting her with some arrows right at the very start. Since we're not using, I'm going to take my seal off. Because the Mimic will try and use that seal. We don't want that. We want the Mimic focused on doing Mimic stuff. Oh, doom. Those uplifting aromatics are going to be fantastic here, though. Bad, bad. We're just gonna run in and try to get her down here. And there it is. Damn right, I'm a mark of true lord. Let's go! Shard better millennia. Down in two attempts. Dear not too Mikola. bad, not too bad. Oh, dearest Mikola, my brother. I'm sorry. I finally met my match. That's extra delicious, because I had so many people complaining about I uh, abused Blasphemous Blade in the Let's Play, and I think, I think I took, what, two or three attempts there? And here it was two attempts? Just goes to show you, it ain't all about the one weapon. Sometimes you just know what you're doing. But yeah, like I said, blood, frost, constant aggression, all are gonna really, really help here. Um, more than anything, you know, it's just, it's it's being aggressive and beating her and constantly staggering her and then just kind of getting out of the way when she's getting ready to do her big thing. Uh, but rest at the grace, there's gonna be a big flower here. I'm gonna go over here. 
return that, we get the Mikella's Needle and then the Somber Ancient Dragon Smithing Stone. As I mentioned already, with the Mikella's Needle, you can take that on over to the Dragon Lord Placid Dusax area. I don't think I'll even get the prompt while I'm here. Um, let's see, where is it at? It should be in our regular items, not in our key items. Do, 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 do. Yeah, so if I have a Frenzied Flame, I come here, I hit use, I can use it, and that's going to subdue it. Uh, but we're not going to need to do that. Instead, we are going to continue on and uh, let's see. Yes, we are done with all of our uh, done with all of our side quests now. So back to the side, the great yeah, beside the Great Bridge, uh, and we're going to be continuing on, making this a double feature. We got her down. Now let's go take down Malaketh. Of course, let's also spend those runes because if it's your first playthrough your second playthrough whatever the case is ain't no reason to not level up ideally carrying all of this stuff would be really nice i know it's a lot to carry how much is the crossbow weigh? let me see i might have to just put the crossbow on ah it weighs four four weight units that's definitely beefier have you on you weigh 12. I mean, right now, this is turning into, like, the build that I would take with me through, like, new game, new game, new game, new game. So, getting more endurance probably isn't a bad idea. So, I could have my great shield, and I could have the pulley crossbow at the same time, but we're currently good with that. Uh, so, this next boss, Malaketh. Um, honestly, this this is a... Uh, I don't think he's nearly as bad. If you beat Mikella, you can beat this guy. Uh, the one thing I want to... We're not going to use that. Oh, here, I'll take that off. Uh, we want to put on this, Blasphemous Claw. We got that from the invasion that we had already done earlier. And that's going to allow us to basically parry him in his second phase. Now, this guy doesn't get two health bars like Millennia does. Uh, the first phase this is basically the dude that was giving us all the beast items. Except now he's angry because we're attacking over here. Um, which also, reminder, while we're on it, when you beat this guy, the capital is covered in ash. So, if you don't have your Bolt of Grand Six, if, you know, you have a buddy that's almost out here and you're going to need to help him get through a boss, whatever the case is, the, the depths will still be there, but all this other stuff, West Capitol, Lower Capitol Church, Avenue Balcony, all the loot that's over here in the Fortified Manor, you are going to be locked out of all of that. So... Make sure that you are satisfied with your capital experience before you fight this guy. Um, but let's see, talking about him, he's also resistant to holy. Phase one is going to be a beast form. Uh, in his beast form, he's going to be throwing rocks and doing all that shit. I think that form is actually harder. His second phase involves him pulling out a sword and leaping all over the place. Uh, Blasphemous Claw, we can use this to spot parry him during that phase. He's going to jump in the air, and he's going to do one blade beam, two blade beam, three blade beam, and then he comes down to attack you. When he comes down to attack, you can hit Blasphemous Claw, knock him on his ass, and then you have like a three or four second window where you can punish him before he tries to counterattack. So, definitely some uh, some good stuff there. Let's pop a Rune Arc. I'm going to hit him in the face with Frost right at the start of this fight. Actually, I'm going to have my shield up right at the start of this fight. Uh, I would recommend either summon here. Tish is probably going to work out the best for you simply because of the fact that she can reduce maximum health. Put on some loyal crab. Uh, be careful of the ledge. You can fall off the ledge here and die to grab it. Alright, he is frostbit. We're good there. Now we're just going to work them down. That's not good. Wow, I can't believe I missed all of those rocks. Missed me. Oh god, I spoke too soon. Oh no, Tish fell off the ledge. I think she did at least. Either that or she died. As you can see, we kind of just abused the pillars here. Give you a second to heal, but he hits pretty hard. Phase two happens. Got moved by the 
explosion. Yeah, I mean, no one's gonna. We're probably gonna die here. Just cause Back away from that. That's his weapon arm. You'll notice he deals uh, damage over time as well. That's a, one of the things with his weapon. Now, dying here, we do need to start phase one and then do phase two. Probably gonna pull out. Honestly, I think if I just fight him with my mimic, if I just go up and start smacking the shit out of him, he'll probably die. Because me and the mimic were pretty ballsy against Millennia, and we took her down, so I'm just gonna do that. What do I have on you? Twiggy and Stone Barb. Both of which are kind of irrelevant here, but. Yeah, let's do that. We'll just go beat his ass with the mimic. Not even letting me get out of the gate. Right now the hardest part of this fight is the fact that he wants to fight right by this ledge. I do not like that. It's Who's the man? Who's the man that has the plan? Oh, oh, who's the man? That's enough of that. And there's another trophy for you with Malakath the Black Blade. Death incarnate forms. With the Black Blade, we have the power to kill a god. I wish we could actually fire that. Anyway, after the cutscene, you are going to wake up over in the Ashen Capital. No! I fucked up! Oh my god! Oh, I fucked up. Well, I fucked up, but y'all don't have to. So, um, yeah, that whole thing about, like, make sure you're done with the capital before you do that. Uh, before... <laughs> damn it. Before you kill Malekith, and, uh, after you kill Millennia, you come to Round Table Hold. Now, once the, the world tree is burned, uh, Gideon is gonna be gone. Yeah. But if you come over here after Malekith, you can talk to him, and he is gonna give you... The equivalent of like great magic barrier but for holy damage i just i forgot to do it completely i can't believe oh my god I, the whole reason we went to get millennia done early was to get that spell and i still forgot about it i mean i can't use it on my build anyway but it's basically like barrier of gold uh except it's going to give you a huge increase against holy damage which if you're a faith build is going to be super useful for the final boss battle 
I think we'll get by fine without it. Obviously, if you're watching this video, you're going to have a chance to come and talk to him and get that spell. I wouldn't have used it myself anyway, but I can't believe it. Like, I, oh my god. Is it, I didn't even put it, you know what, now I'm looking at it, it's not even in my notes. I should have had it in like big bold letters. Go talk to Gideon, and I didn't. Uh, well, anyway. Uh, with both Millennia and Malekith down, let's, let's go on over, talk about some things. So, uh, the round table is basically empty. There's a couple things we can do, actually. We need to, uh, um, where's it gonna be? Underground roadside. We got these seedbed curses that we needed. We're gonna go pick those up. Pump my endurance a bit more. Let's go northwest past all the rats. And right now we're just running to feed all of these curses to Dung Eater. And we're gonna pick up, uh, we'll get his armor as well as a thing we need for one of the hidden endings. Bed curse. It's gonna the screen's gonna go black and then yeah, lots of stuff happens. Giving him five. We now get the mending rune of the fell curse. Go on and quit and reload. And then when we get back in, we should have access to his extra grotesque looking armor, which is actually really good. It's the it's either the third or the second highest poison in the game. So, full omen set. Um, with that acquired, we'll go back to the round table. So the last thing I want to talk about before we wrap up this episode are some changes at the round table. Uh, so when we first showed up here, there was a prompt that said the, the Twin Maidens now have access to new items. We're going to run on over them. Of course, we're going to also turn in the ball bearings. And now... If we go over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's for here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, and this is where all your runes are going to go. If you're done leveling, load up on whatever you want. Get enough stuff that you can upgrade multiple weapons, that you can upgrade multiple ashes. You know, do it up. Get it all. Um, some other stuff. We have the bullises, rune arcs. So I'm gonna pick those up. I always love having some rune arcs. That I need it, but why not? I'll get that. Oh! Huh. Interesting. Okay, hang on a second. I think that's what he was gonna give us. I think we got it because we beat Millennia. Talk to Gideon off near purchasable. No shit. Okay, well, yeah, that's the spell that I thought we missed. So there it is. Look at that. We didn't miss it after all. You can still buy it. Even when I thought I messed up, I didn't mess up. That's dope. Uh, so yeah. Um, and then let's go over to the fingers and talk about using these ashes. Because there's some pretty cool stuff. So, going on over here. First up, Remembrance of the Rock Goddess. Uh, if you're a dex build, this thing is crazy. It is super, super strong. If you catch somebody with it in PvP, it's basically an I win button. Uh, fantastic in PvE. I would very highly recommend this katana. Um, Scarlet Aeonia, on the other hand, it's hard to get behind it. It's really cool, and visually it's definitely one of the coolest spells, but it's really slow to go off, and, I mean, both in PvE and PvP, most stuff is just going to kind of beat you while you're in it, and it has a very slow recovery time, so it's hard to stand behind it. But this is fantastic. Uh, as for here, Malachi's Black Blade is really fun. Destin Death is that thing he did where he swung the blade over his head and stabbed it in the ground, and then there was like a expanding, uh, almost like orb that went out with cuts going everywhere. Very anime, very stylish. It's pretty good. Uh, Black Blade, this is the one that he did up in the air. 
this is going to reduce maximum HP and then continue to drain their HP. So it is a very, very solid incantation. It does take a little bit to get off, uh, but very good in, in uh, PvE because it has that same effect that Tish has. So both of these are very good. Obviously, this is for dedicated faith builds. This one is going to be for, you know, it's weapon strength, dex, and faith. Um, my particular build with the quality build, I'm not going to be using any of that stuff, but, you know, good, good stuff all around right there. So use whatever you want and, uh, yeah, ready to go. Uh, so from here, we are going to be doing the Ash and Capital in the next episode. Wrap that up and possibly the final boss. I don't know if we'll reach the final, final boss in the next episode, but we might. So either way, stay tuned and I'll be coming to you soon with some more.